gorgeous but dangerous. That's how Lieutenant James Wheel would describe the nearly 150 waterfalls in the Ithaca area. We do a significant number of gorge rescues during the summertime when the gorges are busy. We can kind of anticipate a beautiful sunny Sunday afternoon we might have an issue. Um, but we also go in the winter as well, and that presents challenges with rushing water, with ice, all kinds of situations that are dangerous for our folks as well. While creating opportunities for scenic photos or a quick swim, they can be dangerous and even deadly. Ithaca Fire Department expects to be called to local waterfalls for both major and minor injuries several times a month. The calls they respond to are diverse, the most severe being drownings and falling from tall heights. Because of the rough topography in Ithaca, a majority of calls require a specialized skill, according to Assistant Fire Chief Tom Basher. For us in Ithaca, you know, with the gorges and the waterfalls, everything's a high angle. You know, a low angle job down a, a somewhat of an embankment is not that big of a deal. The higher angle ones, obviously, there's more hazard to us, takes more time to set up, but we're prepared to do either or. High angle calls require firefighters to set up rope rescues to retrieve the endangered person. The skill is one that can't be learned from a book or a PowerPoint, but Ithaca Fire gets plenty of practice with the real world scenarios. Once we know where they are, we'll usually do a medic, we'll, we'll repel somebody directly down to that person and then see how bad they are, see what they need. Once we know what they need, we can decide, can we just walk them out? Can we put them in a basket and carry them out? Or do we need to set up a rope system and haul them out? All those things depend on the situation, and that's how we kind of chip away at it. The complexity of the rescues requires surrounding agencies to fill in and cover the station while the rescue is performed. So when you're obviously pulling a number of different fire departments to work on one of these incidents, now the other departments in the county are going to have to pick up and cover calls for those agencies that are currently tied up. So it's a trickle-down effect where it really does affect the county as a whole. George Tomborelli is the paramedic supervisor for Bangs Ambulance and Fire Chief in Cayuga Heights. He describes the personnel required to properly respond to the calls. Uh, it takes an ambulance out of service for the duration of that incident um, and sometimes two ambulances. So if we're, we have an ambulance treating the patient and the patient leaves the scene, we still have to have an ambulance there to stand by for the firefighters who are now risking everything to get themselves out of that situation, recover their equipment. So it could take 10, 15, 20 people to do a simple ankle injury off trail in a gorge. First responders take an all hands on deck approach to every rescue, but how exactly do people get themselves in these situations in the first place? Well, the local emergency personnel all agree it usually has to do with getting off the path into restricted areas. When people get into the water, however, a whole new challenge is presented. I would say unless you really know what's going on underneath, stay out of the water. And certainly if you see any signs of boils coming up, stay out of the water. Edwin Cohen is a professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Cornell University. He researches environmental fluid mechanics and describes why the currents are so dangerous. It gets generated by some change in the channel as a river flows. So you might have a jog or a peninsula sticking out and then an eddy will spin off horizontally, but you might have a jog or a hole in the bottom. And in our gorges of Ithaca, we see this all the time. So as water goes over the top of that hole sitting here, now an eddy will start to spin just like a ball underneath that. And you can't see it on the surface. It's very dangerous. Cohen says with at least one death a year due to waterfall related incidents, students, residents and visitors should only swim in designated areas. To educate visitors about the dangers, the Nathaniel Rand Class of 2012 Memorial Gorge Safety Education Program was established by Cornell University. In 2011, Nathaniel was trapped underneath the water near the Ithaca Falls in the Fall Creek Gorge. The program, named in his honor, includes a gorge safety website, signage, safety videos played for first year students, and a gorge steward program. But college students are most receptive to hearing from their own. Um, so I think it's great that we have uh, this, this kind of role where uh, we can be the ones to go out and be like, hey guys, you really need to get out of here or you really shouldn't be doing this. Annabella Maria Galang is one of the seven gorge stewards paid to monitor the gorges. 
In her training, she was briefed on common areas where swimming is prohibited and shares a story of an experience she had while on the Cascadilla Gorge Trail. So another one of the things that we covered in training was how quickly the landscape can change. Like I remember one day I was hiking up a path on like Cascadilla and there was a bunch of people sunbathing on, on the side of um, on like a little beach like area. So a little dry spot with the with the water rushing past like adjacent to them. And we looked across the way because obviously they were on the other side of the fence. Um, and we were like, you guys need to get out of there. That's not safe. Um, and then two days later, uh, the, the wall crumbled. Uh, the wall like directly behind them crumbled and it completely covered the area where they were sitting. The ever-changing landscape is yet another reason that staying on the path to avoid an injury is critical. The first responders reflect on why it's so important to stay on the trail and out of the water. They say Ithaca is gorgeous, and it is. And it is dangerous too. And there's reasons why those signs are there. And they're not just to keep people away, it's because it's dangerous. And unfortunately, doing this for as long as I've had, we've had a lot of fatalities in these areas. It's a beautiful place and you can't put a fence around everything and you can't put a net underneath, underneath everything. And they do a, a pretty good job making this place safe, but inevitably things happen. And if you're gonna be doing anything like that, make sure you're hiking with a friend, make sure you tell someone where you are, make sure you know where you're going, make sure you have a cell phone. And if you do need help, give us good, clear information and don't go off the beaten path and don't go off to places that are restricted. They're restricted for a reason. For ICTV Reports, I'm Grant Johnson.